think memes work, and people don't necessarily need to understand deep axioms, but it is important. I've seen some people deface arguments on face value without delving any further. Some people need to be tutored, apparently, that feelings, badness, experience, and consciousness are significant in and of themselves, or the source for all significance, or anything related to a thing that can be called significant, and not who is experiencing them. That is important. Does language fail, or do we simply have to think harder and be honest with ourselves? All I have to do is say it, and should, automated by badness, is now a reality. Consciousness is the only premise that can be proclaimed. The observer cannot dissect his or her observing, so they shouldn't assume they are the only observer. If you want to proclaim rocks, non-feeling objects, or abstract concepts have value in and of themselves, they can no longer be sampled or tested. There are no brains, nerves, and neurons, sampling, modeling devices, and anything else in the known universe besides life on Earth. A feeling is a feeling. No thing is no thing. Illusion isn't the same as feeling, although we would not be aware of illusions without feeling. An illusion is an illusion, regardless of whether you are aware of it. This wording may sound strange, but it is the most technically accurate I've come up with in regards to the English language. What you call it is irrelevant. A lie, a deception, no thing, nothingness. Your experience remains. If you deny that, I can eject you from the game. Nothingness implies nothingness. Feeling is simply feeling. Non-feeling is both incomprehensible and illogical to deny. The feeling is just feeling. Feeling is nothingness, but it's also not non-feeling. It is something that cannot be described, but doesn't need to be, since you can taste it. Non-feeling is incomprehensible to experience. Non-feeling nothingness is a relevancy in and of itself. Non-feeling does not necessarily imply non-illusion, inference, science, objective apparentness, independent illusion of, of observer. Nothingness can at least be logically understood through deduction. It's a lot of word games to say acknowledging consciousness is correct, good, and or should be done, and to take it seriously. The context of consciousness has you locked in. Once you are dead, there is not even the conception of you, regardless of whether there is a you. This alone obligates one to be aware of life on Earth. A lie is not a lie to itself, in and of itself. What is truth without a lie? The apparent correctness is a lie, and existence is an impossibility. There is no truth. A lie is no longer just a lie. A sampling device is a sense organ that interprets apparent reality through the manifestation of consciousness. Consciousness is a deception, a trick so good it works. A trick that works is effectively the same as if it were not a trick, effectively. We all have the same goal, and that is to avoid pain and be comfortable in an ultimate, if not immediate, reactionary sense. You will demonstrate that if you are conscious. Attempting to prove otherwise would, not, would only prove desire to be right, which invalidates authenticity to the above statements. Pain for the sake of pain does not happen ever. Pain for the sake of pain is an oxymoronic statement because we are designed to do things out of desire, which implies fulfillment, belief. It is much more painful to suffer because you do not want to. There are only so many ways to torture someone or yourself, so many ways to feel pain and increase it. The duration of the punishment is then required for the hell thought experiment. There is no notion of accomplishment, pride, or other feeling of reward or relief there is no desire to push or pull. The notion of accomplishment, pride, is enough to push through pain perpetually. Desire is proportionate to perceived reward, but this thought experiment works only because it would be a forced slash fantasy circumstance. To suffer for eternity and self-pity would not be equal to valuing sameness, sense of self, even if there is no self, non-reaction to pain psychological and physical masochism. 
The sensation of being saved from dying or coming close to death, or inflicting pain deliberately, and then releasing it, can produce, I believe, a greater reward or relief through an endogenous or endorphin-like response from the body, suffocating yourself and then taking a breath before it injures you. In terms of emotions like unworthiness, worthlessness, and guilt, inflicting pain as punishment would, could be desired to relieve the psychic turmoil. These are just examples, but I believe demonstrate pain is never done for the sake of it. But please don't be a Sisyphus and get addicted to the rise and climb of things only to get back in the pit again, even if you're good at getting out of pits. What we want is perpetual motion like a photon. Point is, the goods are built out of the bads, are thus tainted, and not truly good. You need a hole dug to be able to fill it up. The whole is badness incarnate. There is no golden egg, so to speak, as in Mendham has said. Asymmetry technicalities. There is only badness and the relief from badness. That is a conditional good. Without life or unless in a pristine utopian state, there is simply zero. To push through badness for utopia is less effective than simply ending badness. Only possible way for this to be false is if we are close to it. I've heard VR, virtual, virtual reality, transhumanism, and the singularity used to claim this. Even if these were true or feasible, the wildlife on planet Earth remains and is still a failure by itself. When someone says it is good, there are no Martians or Bretonians suffering or that preventing harm, birth, or injury to life already here is good, it simply means the recognition is a relief that no bad took place in regards to the net deficit. This simply refers to the immediate circumstance of all lives on Earth, conscious welfare, harm, blood footprint, your impact. If you were to take the sum of all feeling and total it. Since you cannot literally do this, you can only guess that it is very fucking bad based on the asymmetry and above statements, let alone one pig or cat being tortured, which is fundamentally flawed. Once all consciousness, all of it, is obliterated, there is no bad. Badness in past events affects only those who get the report, acknowledge badness took place. The purpose is to acknowledge it and respond appropriately, never have it happen again or feasible. Regards to DNA, evolution, origins and function of life, unintelligent design, pain did not motivate consciousness would be useless to DNA for replication. We have evolved up until this point precisely because it has worked. Like in Mendham has said, the universe threw up on itself by allowing us the faculties of critical thought and logic. It was a blind, unintelligent force that brought us here and gained this for no purpose, just a chemical biological process, the function of replication for the sake of replication. All have thus far gone non-deliberately. We can go for ourselves and the other sentient animals now, out of dignity and respect for suffering, the greatest opportunity. Replication for the sake of replication. Organisms that have been around for millions of years and have not significantly changed, I believe demonstrate that we only change if reproduction can be improved or is threatened. Since animals cannot volunteer to opt out, I think the best way to look at it is someone's at it. Someone stopping is stopping someone who thinks they are accomplishing something by hitting themselves in the head. Maybe against their understanding, but it still prevents harm. It would be one thing if it was one or a few beings who can only create more of themselves who enjoy hitting themselves or are immortal in some way. But there's an entire biosphere without us still in a bloodbath of survival should be ended peacefully and gracefully as possible. Red button scenario. There is apparent correctness. Deny your own experience if you wish, don't impose on mine. If you have no notion of badness and want to impose it aggressively or through negligence, seeing evil and doing nothing about it, I now have permission to forcibly eject you from the game board. The word thing is an error code in language. In my experience, it is reference to the concept of a first cause or beginning to everything apparent. 
Logically, I can deduce that there is no true fundamental beginning, start or inception of anything. A void remains a void because it is a void. Without premises, evidence, objective apparentness, or inference, guesswork based on observation, that is true, this must be true. The only logical tool left is deductive reasoning, deconstructionism, taking assumptions apart. I've written further on this stuff and can clarify it further if you wish. The only real language issue is that the word apparentness is a bit hefty to use over and over, but I think it should be for use for technical mastery. Some people may use the concept of infinity to say it just is, and while no beginning and end works verbally, it only implies that there is an endless illusion within illusion and cannot be observed. This is different than using the word thing, however, which is connected to the word existence. It implies only, only illusion. Apparentness, illusions, can be inferred through observance, and deducted to be apparent even when not observed. This is most of science, not all of it. Quantum mechanics to me simply means we have more to learn. I think it would be very bad to do away with all that is previously known about cause and effect mechanics and assume awareness makes reality so. Just because you haven't figured it out doesn't mean you have an excuse to proclaim assumptions as truth. If you never tasted consciousness, you wouldn't understand it. You can't understand something that doesn't make it untrue. You just have more to learn. Opinions are not necessarily facts. If someone thinks it's okay to hurt someone, that does not make it okay. You need evidence. There's a truth that can be discovered. The goal is to develop an opinion that is correct. Using intuition alone leads to theories of statements that are not necessarily true. Gods, flat earth, aliens, ghosts, hearsay, folklore. That is why deduction, inference, and established facts, evidence, through observation and testing, experiments, must be used to testify, prove, objective, parents. That's my thesis for ending life, terminal disease. Thank you very much.